So I'm trying to turn this cheap 150 pound Harley Benton into a custom shop killer for 500 pounds all in. Now in the last episode, we completely refinished and relic this guitar ourselves and I am over the moon with the results. Obviously you can see we did it in a beautiful shell pink, but today, we're doing what I think might be the biggest upgrade we're doing, at least the best bang for buck. And that's gonna be the hardware. I'm talking the tuners, the bridge, the nuts, and a few of the little bits that will make this guitar feeling a bit, a bit more premium, I think, or I hope so anyway. This is also a pretty exciting episode because I think it will be the first time we're able to put some strings on it, get some tones. So I figured we'd start with the neck. Uh, one of the biggest things I noticed from the first episode is that I didn't like the tuners that came with the Harley Benton. So we've gone and upgraded. We have a set of Wilkinson tuning pegs, and these were surprisingly not that expensive. These were 24 pounds, 24 pounds, and I'm hoping that they're going to be a big improvement over the originals. Now, to go along with those tuners, we also managed to get uh, something I've put on quite a lot of my Fender style guitars, and that is a Graftec uh, lubricated string trees. These were £10, so £10 for two, and we will need both for this guitar as well. Finally, while we're on the neck, I do have a nut as well. This is a pre-cut nut from Tone Ninja. Um, shout out to James Home of Tone, who stocks these. Uh, similar sort of thing, I think, to the Graftech stuff, so hopefully that shouldn't be too much of a problem to fit in. Okay, they look in all fine. Now, I didn't go for staggered tuners. These are all the same height, just because that adds a bit more to the price of the tuners. Obviously, we still are on a relatively tight budget, so I think these should be fine, especially with the addition of the string trees. We shouldn't have too much of a problem with, you know, strings popping out the nut, for example. There we go, let's screw these in. They feel much better, uh, feel the tension feels much smoother across the board. Yeah, they feel nice actually, they feel just fine. Next up is this nut. I'm a little nervous about nuts because it, it feel, this feels like a, a job for a guitar tech and I'm not a guitar tech, but we're gonna give it a go. Uh, the first job is to get that one out. Oh, there you go. Out it pops. So first things first, the nut is a little too wide to fit in the hole, so we're gonna need to, first of all, take off a bit of the width. Bit more still. That should have done it. So you can see it does just overhang a little bit, so we'll have to uh, sand and shape this a little bit more around the edges. Okay, so I've done the nut. Uh, it's okay, seems okay. I haven't taken any height off the nut or done anything with the um, string slots just yet. I'm gonna wait until we do a bit more of a setup on this guitar, but I've got it fitted. I'm really happy that we did the matching headstock on this guitar. Maybe one day we will get a like, like a decal, like a custom decal to go on here but right now I like it plain. So we're gonna move on to the body now, and this is where I've done a few cool things, I think. We've got the original electronics just in here because the ground wire does actually go to one of the um, bridge studs. So for the bridge, we got a Goto bridge. Um, this is, I think it was actually, um, it's not like a standard Les Paul bridge. It is, I think it's closer to like an ES335 bridge. Um, slightly different measurements. So I think this will be a massive improvement on the original one, let's get the original out, I've got it here. Just from the weight of the two of them, you can tell that the Goto is much more heavy duty and much better built. And finally, to go along with that bridge, I splashed out and uh, we got something quite special to go in this guitar. I've had to sort of sacrifice the budget on some other things so we can afford to put a Duesenberg Le Trem on this guitar. Being a Jazz Master style guitar without a trem maybe seemed a bit wrong, and this is gonna be a really cool way, I hope, of getting a tremolo on this guitar. First of all, we'll do the Goto Bridge. Um, this should be relatively easy as well. Lovely stuff. Let's put the screws in. And then the new bridge. Oh, oh, goes on just like that. Seems okay, it actually seems, it's a little snug, but it does go on. Okay, next of all is the Duesenberg Le Trem. I think this is a Le Trem 2. I don't know what the difference is. Feels like it's cross-threading a little bit. Let's tighten that up. 
Oh, nice. The engineering of that bridge is pretty impressive as well. I like it. I like it a lot. And it is not touching the body. The bridge is on. So I need to update you on some prices as well. So the Goto bridge was £27. Again, just like the Wilkinson tuners, I think that's pretty good value for money and hopefully that will be a nice big upgrade for this guitar. And finally, the big spenny thing of this episode, I suppose, is the Duesenberg La Trem. The Duesenberg La Trem 2 was £88. That Trem is over half the cost of the whole guitar. So yeah, in this episode alone we spent £158. So more than the cost of the guitar on hardware. So it's a couple of days later again, uh, everything is strung up. Uh, all the bits are bolted on, uh, well, a few screws missing on the pit guard and I'm not put the knobs on just to save time later down the road. But this is the first time we've had strings on this thing and had it in a playable state since the first episode, which was, you know, for me filming this about two months ago. But without any further ado, I guess we'll get some tones. We may as well take this opportunity to play the guitar and hear how it's sounding in its current form. Okay, cool. Cool, the guitar feels really, really good. I'm loving the Duesenberg La Trem. It's a nice addition, makes it feel a little more jazz mastery. The sweep, the feel, the sort of tension on the arm, for me feels somewhere in between a jazz master tremolo and a Bigsby type tremolo. The tuning stability seems okay. We are a bit out of tune now, but we were wanging the tremolo a bit harder than maybe we normally would in a typical with typical playing and it's we are just about we're out of tune but we're it's not far off i do think you know for 24 pounds these tuning pegs are a significant upgrade compared to the original ones that may also be helped a little bit by this uh, new string trees i'm not sure that these were completely worth the 10 pounds but you know, with, that's something we may have to deal with later down the road. I'm happy with the nut as well. Again, it's hard to tell when you change so much about a guitar all in one go. Maybe it's hard to tell the individual differences, but I am happy with this new nut. I guess as well, we haven't played this guitar since we refinished it. And whether it's the hardware or taking all the lacquer off this guitar, but it has opened up quite a bit more top end zinginess of the guitar, which is all intents and purposes, a really good thing, especially acoustically. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this from this microphone. But I do think that it might have opened up a little bit of lacking in some low end zinginess, some low end resonance and vibrations from the guitar. I'm really happy with the progress we've made on this guitar so far. And realistically, you could leave it here. You know, the pickups sound good as they are. But of course, we are not leaving things here. There are at least two or three more episodes of this whole series. The next episode is going to be all about pickups. We're going to change the pickups next. And I've already ordered them. They are really cool. I know we've spent more than the cost of this whole guitar on the hardware, but I think if you're gonna spend your money anywhere, it should be on those little things that add up to make a big difference.